Hi bag builders, it's Diane from Spencer Rog Sewing Patterns and I'm just bobbing on briefly today because there's something that I get an awful lot of emails and loads of questions about and that is how to download and print your PDF patterns successfully. So for any of you who do need help today, I'm going to demonstrate what program to use when opening your PDF file and what not to use, how to save your PDF file and where to save it to, how to print at the right size, how to print just selected pages, troubleshooting anything that might be going wrong, how to save ink, and at the end I'll show you how to increase or decrease the size of your pattern should you wish to. I'm going to be demonstrating on Adobe Acrobat today. Adobe Acrobat and Adobe Reader are both very similar programs. The Acrobat has a few more functions but you'll be able to follow along. Just to say I am not a techno wizard, I'm just imparting the knowledge that I have and I hope it helps. So here's just a very simple PDF document. A PDF stands for a portable document format and it's a standard file sharing document. It was introduced as a means to share and exchange documents reliably between computers and across different operating platforms when you need to save files that cannot be modified but still need to be easily viewed and printed. Today, almost everyone has a version of Adobe Reader or other program on the computer that can read a PDF file. Obviously, I'm a bag designer, so I'm going to demonstrate with a bag pattern today, but it's the same for any kind of document you wish to open. I wanted to give you some general guidelines and help with opening and sizing your patterns, and this works for any PDF, regardless of whether it's a bag pattern, a dress pattern, an architectural blueprint, or anything else. So I'm going to start from my Spencer Rog webpage, where I sell PDF patterns and hardware for bag making and pdf patterns obviously are a wonderful thing you can see i do a range on here but there's lots of designers that do lots of ranges of pdf patterns um, they provide instant gratification there's no waiting around for the postman to arrive or driving to your local store they're cheaper to buy than hard copy patterns and you have the widest range available at your fingertips they're not just limited to the selection that's available in a single bricks and mortar store now to download a PDF pattern, you're going to need Adobe Reader or Adobe Acrobat. Um, and you'll find the icon on your computer somewhere. Obviously mine's down at the bottom of the screen, um, but you'll find it if you just search for it on your computer. If you don't have it, um, you probably do, but if you don't have it, you can download it for free at Adobe and I'll put the link in below. Now, mobile devices such as iPads, tablets and phones are notorious for resizing your PDFs to fit their own reader programs. So always open into an Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Reader program. And if you can, open it on a laptop or a desktop computer. Don't use Windows PDF viewers or Mac previews to print from. So let's navigate to something we want to open and download. So I'm just going to nip across to my blog and have a look for a small pattern um, to download. There we go. So let's go to the cosmetic pod. So I'll just open that and you will find when you get to the page that there's always a link. If you've bought a pattern, you'll usually get um, an email through, but you'll also get an instant link as well where you can just go and download it. So on this one, it's just on my blog. So it's just a click to download. So this is click and it'll actually open. If nothing does happen when you click the download links, it's possibly that you've got an issue with your web browser. So disable any non-standard add-ons or toolbars that you've installed and make sure you've allowed pop-ups and try again. So that's opened on my screen. Don't print directly from here as you don't know what program it's opened into and it will depend on your device and the setup on that device. It's much better to download it and then open it into Adobe from there rather than letting your device choose where it's going to open it to. So if I go up here, I can see this little download icon. So all you need to do is press that and that will download straight to your downloads file if that's how you've got it set up, but it will download to wherever you want it to be on your computer. You can change it wherever. So I'm just going to press save there. So that's your PDF downloaded. Now all you need to do is open Adobe Reader or Adobe Acrobat. There we go. And locate that file. So you can either go to my computer on the side here and look at downloads, or you can go and say file and open. 
and go to downloads that way and you'll see obviously I've downloaded it a couple of times just because I had a practice before I came on um, but those are your documents there so it'd just be one um, your documents may have been downloaded as a single item or it may be in a folder or a zip file containing a number of documents for example one document for the pattern pieces and another for the instructions but you only need to print the one you want I tend to produce all my patterns now in one single document so half of it can't be mislaid and then you choose which which part of it to print so you can also make a file on your computer which is always worthwhile for storing all your patterns so they're easy for you to locate and move it there so you know where to find it next time let's just open that um, now my Spencerog website does have a library which holds all your purchase patterns for you to re-download whenever you want to but not all websites and all designers do and really it's best to have all your patterns saved in one place for easy access on your own computer and if your memory is anything like mine you may forget where you actually bought the pattern from in the first place and just remember it as that nice tote bag um, so you won't know where to go to re-download it so it's best to have them all on your computer in one space and it's great to be able to see everything you own in one place regardless of where you purchased it from so let's have a look at printing this now so if the pdf is opening and you can see all the pages then it's been delivered to you okay at the correct size for printing just how the designer expected it to um, but to print it at the correct size you've now got to check the printer and pdf settings at your end so let's choose file and print up here or you can go direct to the print icon there and your print dialog box will pop up and it should look something similar to this so you'll be able to preview how the document will print in this bottom right box here so you can flick between the pages one two or as many pages as there are so the important bit is size so we want our pattern to print at the size the designer intended it to be we don't want some old computer program dictating to us what best, best fits the paper or what paper it thinks we've got in the printer so let's set the print scale and this is a really important thing it's got to be at hundred percent it can be actual size because that's the size it's delivered to you but it's the same thing hundred percent or actual size will print it at the right size you've got to make sure that there's nothing ticked here you, you don't want it at shrink to fit or shrink oversized pages to fit the paper it's got to be at the 100 percent, or otherwise it will shrink it down and it won't be at the correct size that you want it to be make sure the orientation of the paper is correct so obviously i could have had landscape i could have had portrait this one is in a landscape format most of them are in portrait but um, you can also press the auto portrait landscape detect button there and leave it on that and it'll decide for you I tend to mess about with it um, so this one's landscape make sure you've got the correct um, paper size toggled so check what you've got in your printer make sure you've got A4 international size paper or US letter size paper in your printer and then make sure your page setup is set to match this so down bottom left is page setup so just ensure that box there matches the actual paper that you've got in your printer so I've got A4 in there but if you've got US legal letter or whatever you can just click on that and change it but I am A4 so let's go back to that so I've checked everything is the same now within your pattern there will be a control square probably on the pattern somewhere and you want to locate that because what we want to do is just print off the one page that's got the test square on just to make sure that we've got everything right before we print the whole thing and start cutting fabric out um, so I can see that on page two there so I'm going to just pr print page two and then I'm going to measure to ensure that that square measures exactly what it should measure before I print the rest of the pattern off So there's my page printed off I just want to measure that test square so in this case it's a one inch test square so I'll just measure that both ways just to make sure it's right yes that's lined up perfectly your, your test square may be an inch it may be two inches even be four inches depending on the size of the pattern but in this case we're just on a little item so it's just one inch square so that measures fine so once I'm completely satisfied that my print off is going to 
print at exactly the right size, then I'm ready to print the whole document. So in this case, it's only two pages. So I will just have it all toggled at the top and it'll just print the two pages off. If however, you've got a huge pattern that only the last few pages are the pattern itself and they're the only things you need to print off, then you can just print selected pages. So just go here to current, uh, sorry, to pages. You can just print the current page, by the way, just the one that's showing on your screen behind. But I'm going to go to pages. And for example, if I've got a 50 page document and I just want to print the last few where the the actual pattern is, I'm going to say just print 42 to 50 and that'll just print the, the last few pages. And then you can just follow along on your iPad or other device, all the instructions. You've got it in full color. You know, you can save you can save the ink. So obviously I'll go back to all here and we're ready to print. So I'm just going to press that print button. So just a little piece of troubleshooting, just in case you've got missing pages or things aren't printing at all, just check right down from the top. So first of all, the printer, you go into the right printer. You know, you don't want to be printing it to PDF or to OneNote or to a fax. It must be going to the printer that you've got sat next to you. Uh, copies are at one, unless you want more, of course, you can do two copies at once just by increasing that. Um, pages to print, you should be on all or your selected pages. You've also got here more options. So you need to check in there that you've not toggled anything by accident because the here is the option to just print odd pages or just pr print even pages only. So just make sure there's nothing toggled there and that you have got all pages. Another extra tip is that you can select the ink saving function up here in the center. Um, so you can toggle to print in grayscale or black and white or save ink and toner. Obviously the pattern pieces themselves won't take up much ink, but if you're printing the whole set of instructions with photographs and diagrams, that can suck up so much more. So as long as you don't need it in color, obviously you can, you can cl click those to save ink. You, you can certainly cl click them for printing the pattern pieces out themselves. Once you've printed off your PDF pattern, it may be two sheets, it may be 20 sheets, but it'll have good directions on it, how to attach each piece together. So in this case, and with most of my patterns, you literally just cut along um, the line. It'll tell you exactly where to tape together. So this one, I just need to cut that edge off. Match the edges up. And stick that in place. And that is now full size and ready to cut out my fabric. So let's now take a look at increasing and decreasing the size of a pattern. And it's a lot easier than you think. So for example, you have this cosmetic pod and you want to make a smaller version of it. Let's look at decreasing it to start with. So if we go straight to the print box and right down to custom scale and where you had 100% in that box, you just need to reduce it to what your required size is. So for example, I might want to reduce it by 20%. So I'm going to put a custom scale of 80% in. So something that's 10 centimeters would end up as eight centimeters, for example. So once I look at the the print box, the preview box down here, I can see that that's now reduced the size of it and that'll have reduced everything in relation to each other. So I can just go right ahead and print that. So that's decreasing. You can change that scale to anything you want. You can go right down to 25% to make a tiny version. Might be difficult to sew, obviously, um, but anything you like in there. So let's now have a look at increasing the size. Okay, so let's go back to viewing the document again and press the print icon and your dialog box comes up. Now in this case, we want to increase it, but I know already that that isn't going to increase and fit on the same size of, of paper. So we want to hit the poster button and using the poster button, this function allows us to split up an image that's too large for one sheet of paper across several sheets. So in the print dialog box, select poster. Tile scale 
will show at a hundred percent and that will print at actual size so the size it is at the moment but we want to go larger so I'm going to set that to 120 percent so a 10 centimeter item would become 12 centimeters for example I am going to add a little bit of an overlap in there as well just so um, we can see where those lines are going to overlap and it's easier to cut from I'm just going to put in 005 inches but we'll be able to see that afterwards um, I'm also going to click cut marks here and that adds little lines to the page that we can line up together after we've printed it off now in the print preview box you'll see how that's been split if I go to 140% you'll see how much larger that gets and it actually splits it over four sheets of paper then so I'll go back to 120% just so we can print that off easily and I'm going to hit print and then I can show you how that comes out so just quickly to demonstrate before we put that together, that was the original size of the document um, of the cosmetic pod and that's it increased by 20%. So it actually makes quite a big difference. So let's put those together. This was our original pattern with just two pieces of paper and now we've printed off four pieces of paper. So what you need to look for is the cut marks. So you'll see in each corner where the images are joined you'll see these little cut marks we basically we want to cut across there so we can stick them together but i find the easiest thing to do is actually draw a line from one side to the other before i cut so just grab a ruler and line up those cut marks line up your ruler across those cut marks and draw a line right across there so can you see how literally just drawn from one cut mark to the other and I'm then going to cut across and cut that strip off completely. And I'll grab the other side of that there and that should fit directly onto the cut marks. Now again you've got cut marks on the other side as well so you can either do the same there and cut it straight across or you can just line the piece of paper you've cut up to those so I'm going to lay that on top and match it to those cut marks that are already there on the other side and stick that in place so you can see that I've laid that one on top of the other so the cut mark is lying directly on top of that cut mark so again I've got the second piece do the same thing we've got the cut marks across there let's draw a line across and match it to the cut marks on that side and then we're back to a full-size pattern Obviously the designer has said here, me of course, we cut along here. And stick that together. So we now have a much larger pattern ready to go. So I do hope that information helped. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to my channel. And if you're a bag maker or sewer, please do subscribe to my Facebook sewing group and I'll put the links in below. In the meantime, what are you waiting for? Go sew!